Today's session, we'll be exploring test-taking strategies focusing on multiple choice questions. This type of question can be used to test knowledge and comprehension ranging from the remember level through to possibly even the analyzing level of higher order thinking. With multiple choice questions, there are really three strategy areas to cover to make sure you're set up for success. This includes preparing for the question type, the answer process, and understanding difficult question design. Preparing for multiple choice is best done through gaining familiarity. Now everyone has seen multiple choice before, but becoming familiar with it in a way particular to your course and program is our new aim. Your best means of becoming familiar also doubles as the best learning strategy, which comes from doing practice questions. Luckily, most textbooks will include questions or summary sections, either in chapter, in book, or as an online companion. And don't skip these when you're first reading them. Do them kind of as a pulse check when you're first reading, see where you're at, and then redo them through the course as a refresher. If your textbook doesn't have practice questions, you can also look at old textbooks that were used for the course or similar courses and see if they contain practice questions you can adapt to your own use. Optionally, you can also look for alternative course programs that are similar to yours for textbooks that may be able to be used or sourced from. For example, if you were studying biochem or medicine, you may find applicable chapters in a nursing textbook at the library and vice versa. With these questions, remember you are using them as a prompt. The answers are probably gonna to need to be adapted to your specific purposes. So use them more as an inspiration. The next area to consider are old tests you've done for the course. After you finish a test, write down any topics or themes you remember having been on the test. Especially note any question, themes, or topics that you found particularly difficult, or any ones that required extra time to work on. And again, look for anything and make note that of the questions that had large amounts of points. These are all likely to come up again. If your course materials and your tests leave you needing more, we now venture into the self-creating questions from scratch. So when developing questions from scratch, consider the following as really good sources to mine for content. So your course syllabus, paying particular attention to the learning outcomes section. Your course assignments, look into the topic that you chose and also any topics you didn't do your assignment on that other classmates would have. Your class notes and your course reading notes. Now, if you've been using any note-taking or active reading strategies, you likely have a list of keywords or start sections or reflections that you can develop your questions from. If you're in a crunch time and you need a really quick strategy, skim through your readings and your notes for subheaders, themes, anything you outlined or highlighted, and develop questions around those. Finally, if you haven't been studying yet with a partner or group, Pre-test is a perfect time to start. Collaborating or swapping with classmates to develop questions is like crowdsourcing an entire study bank. The more exposure you have in more ways through more minds working at once equals better comprehension. And again, if you are particularly crunched for time, you can also consider dividing up the chapters amongst your group in a real divide and conquer way. So if there's three of you working on it, someone might have chapter one and two, next person three and four, five and six. Instead of trying to learn all six at once, you're responsible for your two and you guys share. Practice questions will make perfect preparation. Now multiple choice can feel easy because the right answer is technically provided for you, but this can also make it really disheartening when you get stumped. So let's break down how to answer a multiple choice question when you encounter it within an exam. The first thing to know is that there is usually a list of four possible choices for answers to fall into. There's usually one obviously wrong. There's two that are partially right and one that is fully right or obviously right. Now, because of this, you need to give the question itself your full attention and then pace yourself through it. When you start a multiple choice question, give yourself a second to think of the answer on your own before reading the answers that are provided. Then read each answer in full. If you're doing a paper and pen exam and you encounter a tough question, 
a good strategy is to put a line through what you think is the obviously wrong answer, question marks beside ones that you think are possibly right, and if one is standing out to you as probably the most likely right answer, put a check mark beside it. This strategy helps reduce time when you circle back to the question later. Especially if you start to run out of time on the test, you can quickly mark in each answer you'd put a check mark beside or review really quickly the ones you had question marks. Those marks you made represent what was your best guess at the time. In any scenario where you will not lose points for wrong answers, always put something in before you pass in the exam. So that being said, let's look at some difficult question types you may encounter that are gonna really stump you a bit. There are four common difficult types of questions that you can encounter here. There's absolutes, double negatives, distracting, and blended answers. Absolute terms are words that'll have always, never, or only at the start of the question or as a focal point in the question. So essentially, if the word makes a very specific rule, you're gonna have to follow that rule 100%. So for example, if the question asks, when preparing to fly, you should never blank, then you need to look for the answer which includes something you would absolutely never do. Double negatives in the question or the answer can be confusing and very easily missed if you're reading too quickly. For these, you may need to reword them in your head so that you can hear them in a way that makes sense. For example, if a question said, there are no insignificant numbers, what it's really saying is there are significant numbers. So you might just have to make that little switch where you're eliminating that double negative. Distracting questions or answers are structured in a way that they have too much info in them. When the question is concise, but the answers have the excess info, be sure to carefully review them as likely there is a minimal switch of a word or sequence that will entirely invalidate one or more of the options. When the question has the excess amount of information, take your time to read through. The answers may seem concise, but hidden within the question itself will be the trick to figuring out exactly which answer is the one that's correct for you. Finally, blended answers. These can be very tempting to choose but their existence doesn't necessarily mean that they're the right choice, and they themselves can often just be a distraction. Examples of blended answers will be statements such as all of the above, none of the above, or a combination of the other options of A, B, and D, or B, C, and D, that sort of thing. Blended answers should be treated as a true or false. The answer has to be 100% exactly accurate as it is written. So for example, if you have a blended answer that says A, B, and C are correct, but you know C is not correct, then you can't choose that combo answer. Multiple choice questions are nearly inevitable, especially early on in your degree. So preparing for them helps gain you time on your exam to use problem-based essay or short answer questions, things which often ask you to develop more of a thought. Practicing with multiple choice questions is like practicing driving. The more you do them, the more skilled you will become in unpacking them and answering them. So thank you for your time and joining me for the review on multiple choice and how to succeed on them in an exam.